Hey y'all, that footage you just saw is of me and my little brother, who is a very talented carpenter, working on my new pen rests that I just launched on Etsy. And I'm really excited that I finally get to share these with you after months of planning and working on them. So here they are, and I'm calling them the pen bed. <laughs> so here we have the king sized, and here we have the queen sized. The king sized holds three fountain pens, and the queen sized holds two fountain pens. So what I want to do today is show you these designs, talk about why I designed them the way I did, as well as give you just a little teensy tiny sneak peek of what I'm going to be working on next. But first, if you want to check these out on Etsy, I have links to both sizes in the description below. You can check those out. For the first week after this video goes live, they are on sale for a few dollars cheaper than what the price will probably stay as uh, for the foreseeable future. So if you watch this video and decide that you're interested, the, the week from this video going live on to the end of the week, that's the time when it would be perfect to go and grab one of these. Also, not just for this week, but forever, 10% of the profit from these pen rests will be donated to help make the planet a better place. I'm well aware of the role that consumerism is having in lots of things, carbon emissions, plastics, pollution of all kinds, landfills, all that kind of stuff. And I want my business to be you know, the kind of thing we, you know, we call it carbon neutral or carbon negative. I, I want to push my business in that direction from the very beginning. So I'm not going to wait until I'm at some kind of financial threshold with this little business before I start giving back. I want to give back right away. So 10% of my profit will go toward healing the earth in some way. And I haven't exactly decided what organization that money's going to go to. If you have organizations you know of that you just love and, and could recommend as trustworthy, effective uh, organizations that are making the planet better, please put those in the description. I would love to go check those out as I'm doing research, as, as I'm trying to decide where the best place will be to put this, to put these funds. So there are a lot of pen rests out there already, right? Tons, lots of different kinds, lots of variety. So why make more? Well, and I'm by no means an expert on pen rests. There's a lot out there, I'm sure, that I'm not aware of. But mostly what I've seen are pen rests that are meant for displaying your pens in some kind of fancy way. It's something you take to a pen show to show off a pen, or it's something you use to take a nice Instagram shot of your pen. But a lot of the pen rests I've seen aren't necessarily something that you're going to use day to day as a convenient way to store your pen in easy reach. So I wanted to do something that made pens look nice as a display item, but also something that was very practical and easy to use. So let's flip the camera and we'll take a look. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice that these pen rests or pen beds, as I'm calling them, have a pretty low profile. They are not like a lot of pen rests out there that try to get your pen up as high as possible. Um, nothing wrong with that, um, especially if you want to display your pens in a fancy way, but it's kind of a tipping hazard. And like I said, I want these to be practical. So they're low profile, so they're not a tipping hazard. They won't tip over. And they're also wide enough that you don't have to like get it just right to balance your pen. The idea is you can, you know, during a writing session, you can just grab your pen and put it back <laughs> and you just don't have to think much about it um, so it's it's just a nice a nice way to have a quick draw pen at your disposal quickly at your desk or something like that also the slots for or grooves i don't know i'll just call them slots the slots for the pens are pretty wide i've seen some that have very narrow slots and sometimes the pen doesn't fully sit down in there. So I made these pretty wide, so hopefully they'll fit even your most chunky pens. The Twisby Swipe is a fairly average pen. It fits well. Um, Twisby Eco, fairly average, but the cap is a little bit chunky, a little bit wide. So it fits pretty well there. The chunkiest pen I own is actually the Noodler's Ahab. So that'll be Kind of a good reference there, hopefully. My slimmest pen is probably my Diplomat Magnum. Magnum? 
So that's how that would fit in there. Um, the, the slots are, are the same size for the, the queen size pen rest and the king size pen rest. So no difference there. It's just the number of slots for pens that they have. So the idea here is that chunky pens sit comfortably, but slim pens don't like get buried alive by these giant holes. So hopefully I've struck a nice middle ground there so that a wide variety of pens will fit comfortably here. I also spaced the slots out a little bit so that the pens aren't rubbing right up against each other. That way you have a little bit more room if you do have some chunky oversized pen. But also it just seems to me like the pens will be easier to grab that way. So, you know, instead of reaching like this and bumping up against other pens, it's just one pen that you're touching. Um, so you're not going to knock the other ones out of place or anything like that. And then this, uh, this angular design I have, um, was almost an afterthought. I mean, I was just trying to think of ways to differentiate my pen rests from other ones I've seen. And I was like, well, I've never seen any that do this. So I did it. Um, but it turned out really cool looking. I really like this angular look and I like how pens look as they're staggered along the pen rest that way. Um, but it has this added benefit of having pens staggered so that they're not all flush with each other. So the idea is hopefully it'll make it a little easier to grab them if you're grabbing them by the tip or whatever. So again, just trying to make this as convenient and practical as possible so that when you're sitting at your desk and you're writing and you want to grab another pen, it's easy just to have it right there and grab it without having to worry about knocking something over or whatever. Okay. Now I want to show you my favorite part of these things. I really wanted to have the spiral, uh, from my little YouTube logo profile picture, um, as my logo for these. So you'll see here on the bottom of all of these, there is a little spiral that has been burned into the wood. So it's actually kind of engraved in and it's dark because it's, it's burned. Um, but it was so cool. <laughs> this was so fun doing. It was definitely my favorite part of making these. It took some trial and error, but I remembered growing up as a kid, I watched my dad take old forks and curl the tines with pliers and then use those to make wind chimes. He would hang spoons and knives from these curled tines and make these little wind chimes. And I was like, well, I could curl a fork. So I curled the tines and I tried different things, trying to see how I could use it as some kind of a stamp or brand. I tried using ink. I tried just kind of like pounding it into the wood. Uh, nothing really worked, but my brother uh, had this old uh, blowtorch laying around and he showed me how to use it to heat up the fork and then boom, just branded it and it worked beautifully. And it was the coolest thing to not only watch, but also listen to because it made such a weird sound. So I have got to show you this clip. Check this out. Okay, wasn't that just crazy? I cannot believe the sound that that made. I don't know what that was, if it was just escaping moisture or something that was being burned out or something. It sounds like the wood is in pain from being burned. <laughs> so weird. Um, it was also really fun to light my pen rests on fire. That was cool. So um, it's kind of fun that uh, I get to uh, send people pieces of wood that I have lit on fire. Um, I don't know if that sounds cool to you, but it was fun for me anyway. So after they were stamped, they were sanded down super smooth. And, um, and then I stained them with a dark ish, but fairly natural looking stain. And some of them are darker than others. There's a lot of variation I've found in, in the rest that I've done the pen rests here. 
So um, yours may look exactly like this. It might be a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. Uh, some of them had little blemishes, like little chipping along the edges or something from the, the power tools that needed to be sanded off. And so some of these turned out to be a little bit rounder than others. Um, so this one is very angular. It's not sharp. I've smoothed off the corners, but it's just about as angular as it can be, um, just with a little bit of sandpaper to make sure it's not sharp. Um, but I do, I want to show you some of the other variations just so you know what you might run into if you decide to order one of these. Okay, so move these two out of the way for a minute here. So here we have one, actually here's two that are a little bit darker than the one I just showed you. So some will be lighter, some will be darker. Mostly they're somewhere around this. Um, and then for the angles, um, like I said, some of them just needed more sanding than others. So some of them look a little more like this, where they're a little more smooth out around the edges. This one, I just decided to go all the way and just see what it would look like if I just really rounded it. It's a nice look. I do really like this. I think it's classy, but I ended up sticking with this as kind of my, my main go-to just because it's a little more dramatic. Um, so if you are interested in one of these variations more than another, let me know because I think I can accommodate that. So if you're like, hey, I want one of those rounded ones, let me know. And if I have some, I, I will make sure you get one. And if you're like, hey, I want to make sure mine is really dark, then I'll give you the darkest one I have. Oh, I forgot to mention, these are pine, um, which doesn't sound too exciting, but I'm actually really in love with how they turned out. I don't know if it's picking up here. Yeah, I think so. Um, I learned the word chatoyance from Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, I watched a couple of videos where he talks about chatoyance in resin pens. And um, it's an interesting word. It's a quality of a material that's kind of uh, pearlescent or iridescent, but in a way that gives it depth. It actually looks like you're looking into the object a little bit. And that's almost the impression I get with this pine. There's, there's almost like a reflective quality that's like in the wood grain. So it almost has this shimmery depth to it a little bit. It's kind of nice. I honestly am not quite sure what kind of wood these are, but my brother, he took one look at it and said, oh, that's poplar. So I'm just gonna take his word for it. These are poplar. Yeah, so they have a very different look, but I think both look really nice. Okay, so the last thing I did with these You'll see they are a little bit glossy. Um, so it's not just kind of a matte finish. I sprayed these with a polyurethane protective coating that gives it a glossy look. This spray, though, is a funny story. I swear I followed the directions exactly right. Maybe it was just a little too cold because I was doing it outside, but the spray did not go on as smooth as I had hoped. Um, I fixed it but I was really disappointed at first because no matter what I did uh, with uh, the angle of the spray or how much I was shaking it or the distance between or um, sanding in between coats, it just felt really rough, which was sad because I had sanded these so baby bottom smooth. But luckily I remembered someone say once that paper, just regular paper, is a micro abrasive. So you'll never guess what I did. I took my trusty rhodia paper, just scraps like this, things that I used to test in ink and then just, you know, just gonna throw away. So I used this as sandpaper basically. And I just went over it a few times and all of that coarseness, all that grit is gone. Um, I can't say they're as baby bottom smooth as they were without the spray but I think the spray is still a nice addition because it gives it that nice shiny look and it's a protective coat, so that's good. And yeah, maybe it's not quite baby bottom smooth, but in the fountain pen world, we don't really like baby bottom, do we? So, um, so I think these are good the way they are. Okay, so these were a lot of work to design and make, but these are really just the first tiny step in a very big journey that I have in mind for where I'm gonna take things next. And I'm gonna stay kind of tight-lipped about it because I don't want somebody 
who already has a more established business with more resources and, and know-how than, than me, I don't want somebody to come along and, and steal these ideas. So I'm going to be a little bit tight-lipped about it, but I have some things, I have more ideas, things that I want to make that I hope will blow your mind. And all I'm going to say, I guess, is that I plan to get into resins. Um, I'm excited to learn how resins work and hopefully learn how to make some of these just gorgeous textured color combinations that some artists out there are able to create. That's Those are tough acts to follow, so no promises, but um, I hope to come up with something equally beautiful and use that uh, knowledge to create more pen products that I hope that you will really enjoy. But in order to do that, I need to sell some of these wooden pen rests so that I can afford to fund these other projects I have coming. So if these interest you, please check them out on Etsy. No pressure, but they're there and I would love for you to check them out. And if you have any suggestions for how I can improve my design, things that you would like to see different or just different designs altogether that you would like someone to create, let me know. I would be really curious to know what you think and maybe incorporate some of your thoughts into what I do next. So I think that's it for this video and I'll talk to you later. Bye.